Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode we're going to be chatting some spoiler season for Wheels of Vengeance and like always answer some listener questions. This is 488. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. It's over, Simeon. I have the high ground. Instant deadpan humor. Over Cody, six Cody people Cody. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Absolute fools. Cool. Simeon will be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clips is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clips singles and SEO products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy clicks straight from the source, and right now they are running a deal where if you buy $50 with the Hero Clicks, you get a surfing gingerbread man. Pretty cool. You can go to shop.wizkids.com and use code DIALH10 for 10% off your Heroclix order. Jordan, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah. If you guys heard that drop, we said it one episode, but if you heard that drop, yeah. that uh, it's over, Simeon, I have the high ground. That, that's a, a listener that sent that drop in, and you too Ooh. can be entered into being part of the intro because it's just going to keep being Bill. Unless someone else sends me something else. Uh, so, yeah, just a reminder. Send it to uh, uh, the Facebook, Discord, wherever. Uh, message one of us directly. Okay. If you have any ideas or you personally want one. Of, I'll take I'll take any ideas if you guys have a sound clip that we've used before or from one of our videos that you want. But also, I'd like more people from the community to join into our intro. So, I think it's fun. When Bill sent me that, I thought it was fun. It didn't really make sense, but I used it. And I'm going to keep using it unless someone dethrones Bill. And then Bill will have to work to get his spot back. Ooh. That's pretty fun. I like that. People can just send in an audio clip and maybe it'll get added to the intro or swapped out with Bill's part of the intro. I think that's pretty cool. I like that. So, all right, guys. Send us in uh, some fun little audio clips yourself. Probably could, uh, like you said, message any of us, dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com if you want to be all fancy. Or if you just, yeah, think there's a cool video or a clip from the podcast, send that in. Maybe we'll use that. That's cool. I think that's fun. I like that. A little, uh, little different every week, maybe. Yeah. It's too late cool. to do it, but um, right. maybe going towards yeah, next right. year, we'll do like the best send-in of the year or something, because we didn't mm. start this till October, so... It's a little late yeah. to judge people on this this year, but uh, maybe next year we'll have we'll have a little contest for it. I like that idea. I think that's cool. Well, all right, Simeon, let's go ahead and kick off with uh, what made you happy this last week, my man. Ooh, yeah. What made me happy this week, uh, I got recertified in CPR and first aid. Oh, boy, I can give your baby CPR. It's terrifying, and I don't want to do it, so don't let your baby huh. choke because well, look at me. I'm the guy that's going to have to say, I'm going to push everyone back, and I'm going to say, I'm going to save this baby's life. Two pats on the back, two pokes in the chest. <laughs> I call it two pokes because oh normal CPR is like two hands. For a baby, it's literally just two fingers, and it's terrifying. I've watched oh, enough kung fu makes movies sense, to know I what guess, these, right? these fingers can do. Uh, the animation they showed us for doing chest compressions on a, an infant was terrifying. It was like... I get it. They're squishy. Their bones aren't like fully solidified, but man, that's a lot of give. I don't like it. Don't want to have to do it. Uh, yeah, they make they make these uh, side tangent. They make these cool like devices that are f relatively cheap for if a infant is choking, you can just like suck the whatever is like in their throat out, and it's got like a filter right. and stuff, so like you won't ingest whatever it is. But yeah, I would. Obviously, if you're a parent and you have an infant, I would suggest you own one. But um, yeah, even if like you just hang out around infants, uh, kids kids are old enough they'll figure it out. They'll swallow it or something. You know, don't worry about them. But infants for sure. Uh, so yeah, I get to drive around with a, right. a fun little mouthpiece. So when I do CPR, it's no longer mouth to mouth. It's mouth to plastic to rubberized face grip to mouth. 
so there's like a okay two steps in between but that that was fun it's not something that i thought i would ever really get into but um yeah hopefully i never have to use it obviously i don't think anyone wants to have to do cpr and i'm not in the business of doing cpr i don't seek it out but i am capable now and uh on top of that Willie Carlisle released a new EP. It is Critterland and Boy Howdy Hot Dog. Is it not my favorite song in a long time? I, too, want to be taken to Critterland. I'd play a section of it right now, but I don't want to get copyright struck. I might do it anyhow, but, man, it is a it is a really fun song. Um, it's pretty interesting. goes into, like, possum-talking goes into the sparrow talking stuff like that so yeah that's all that uh made me happy yeah the sparrow on the wing taught me to find you and the possum knows his own mind more than i do i'm here for all the love that i can stand take me to critterland okay right on I was uh, I was curious about like the recertification thing. So I remember like a few years ago, a year or two, you were like sending me all these like oh, CPR memes, and I was like, "Oh, these are that, terrifying." That weird like click and play thing they made me do. Yeah, that yeah. was horrible. I was yeah, curious to do it that. Not better. No. Okay. Uh, this one was like the National Whatever Heart Service Association. I don't know. It was like through like the okay the big branch thing. So it was theirs. Uh, fun fact, one of the actors, like crisis actors in one of like the act outs, uh, all she does is like stand there and a guy points at her and he's like, you call nine one one. She's like, okay, Lily from AT and T. So yeah. Yo, it's like hey. her very first role or something. Cause it's, you gotta, gotta get your footing somewhere, man. Yeah. She okay. looks a lot different. I will That's say. hilarious to I be like learning bring... CPR. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, That's I was like it's. I was I just know staring you. at it for like a long time because it like pauses on her face multiple times and like replays the segment. They can't, they can't have every segment acted out, so they got to reuse it. Yeah. Um, and I, I said something to the instructor, and he's like, "Do you know who that is?" And I was like, "She looks super familiar." And he's like, "Have you ever heard of a little company called like AT and T or Verizon Jeez. or whatever it is?" <laughs> I don't remember. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, that's the like spokes lady, Lily. And I, I'm like, I don't think that's her real name. I think that's her name on the commercial, but yeah, it's definitely not her real name, but that's her <laughs> Verizon store employee name or whatever. That's hilarious though. It's like, I've always wondered because you know, you do like any, a lot of companies will have training. If it's like a fast food place or like all sorts of like places will have, like even like safety training for all sorts of stuff. He's like, you know, they're actors. I'm just like wondering, I was like, yo, what if I just saw like Chris Pratt in one of these or something? So it's kind of funny. You just, you actually <laughs> did see someone who like had a big break and has like consistent work. That's funny. We're right on. Uh, what made me happy this week? Uh, I'll try to be quick because it was just like banger after banger, amazing, just baller week. Uh, biggest thing was we had some somebody dropped out of a quick little acting deal um, over in Elkhorn. They have like a uh, a filmmakers class or something, I guess, over in the Elkhorn Community College thing, and they needed someone to fill a spot because one of their actors bailed. So I was able to fill that role. It was a ton of fun because one of my co-stars for this like quick little short movie we did was just a huge comic book nerd. So in between takes, we're just talking about like favorite comics, whatever. Um, he was the first person that went on a complete rant about the Watchmen comic and the Watchmen movie that I agreed with him on both sides, which was surprising. Wow. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I know. It's really it's really cool. Um, and we just like talked about like comics, um, you know, Frank Miller, all sorts of cool stuff, like his favorite Daredevil runs, Batman runs, whatever. I recommended him some of my favorite Captain America runs, stuff like that. Um, he's also one of the few people to be like, you know what? Like he was like started talking about the Fantastic Four. And I was like, I'm going to be honest, man, I'm not a big fan of Marvel's first family you know and he was like i did a complete read through a fantastic four like issue one to like current and i'm like okay so that's insane don't know why you would do that yeah. um big I also history don't. buff there's a um, lot of bad yeah lot of bad stuff in there <laughs> yeah 
And he was like, honestly, my biggest complaint was how much they they reuse the thing doesn't like the way he looks as a storyline. Or like, I'm going to go try to go solo or do whatever, right? Just like, you know, to be fair, if I was the thing, I wouldn't like the way I looked. Um, but it was like, he's like, I didn't like how much they use that and how much they use like Namor creeping on Invisible Woman or how much they use like Johnny just doing something ran or like whatever. He was like, yeah, there's a lot of tropes. You realize that the fantastic four just go through in each decade that they just hit on all the time. And he was like, I just, I'm just kind of tired of like this. And I'm like, to be fair, that's kind of a lot of like comic book characters. Even my favorite comic book character, Captain America is like, yeah, I'm going to be not Captain America. Now, now I'll be nomad. Now I'll be the captain. Now I'll be whatever. So, I get I get his criticism, but even as like a Fantastic Four like hater or not a big fan of them, I was like I think that's every comic character just goes think, through. I don't even think just comic character. I think any long running medium of like storytelling will eventually yeah. redo storylines. Like any like any TV show that's hit like season five or six. Um, I don't want to name names, yeah. but like Grey's Anatomy is really bad at like. <laughs> Hey, here's a new character. We're gonna get you like really hooked on them, and they're dying from a disease mm. or like something that requires surgery. And it's like, will these doctors be able to save the doctor? And it's like cliffhanger, Ooh. and then they Ooh. die or whatever. And it's like, not a big fan of Grey's Anatomy. I've barely watched mm. any of it, but I have caught enough to be like, this didn't this happen in like season three? And then I'm like, hmm, pretty sure Doing this it just again. happens over and over again. Yeah, it's. And I mean, there's better examples that aren't Grey's Anatomy, but yeah. uh, that's the first one that comes to mind because that's what's been popping up. Yeah, me and my little brother went to go see the Onyx the Fortuitous movie in the theaters. I was just looking forward to it. I think it was just hilarious that it existed. Found out about it like a week or two ago. And I'm just like, oh, it's too funny. It's too good. It's just too good of a meme to not go see it. So we went and saw it and I'll be darned. It was actually a pretty high quality movie. Like they must have raised a pretty decent amount of money on their GoFundMe Kickstarter, whatever, because it was pretty solid. Like the acting was good. The editing was good. Like the lighting, the scene, just all of it. I was like, oh, wow, this is actually just like a legit movie. They had a ton of these like really weird creature puppet things like special practical special effects that just looked really solid. So I was impressed, you know, being just like a wouldn't say a fan, but just like someone who knows the meme and the funny clips and just being like, okay, wow, made a movie about it. Okay. And it was good. It's pretty just surprised. I don't know. Just, just a fan. I don't know. Maybe. It's a fan. Anime is pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. We them Arby's this boys. One. Skate skirt. <laughs> Love it. That's, that's uh, definitely been Ian the last couple of weeks is uh, ripping open his shirt. And instead of Diablo 3... It's his favorite game is Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I've had to hear the Baldur's Gate 3 stuff. Big, big Baldur's Gate fans in this house. My fans, I do just mean just Ian, because my computer would literally blow up if I tried to install that game. Merely install. It would be like, no, it's not going to happen. But, yeah, so went, saw that movie, had a great time, and then also realized the Freddy Fazbear movie, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, is just also this week, this coming weekend. And I'm like, oh, well, is it probably really? going to go see that. It is, yeah. It's October wow. 27th. So I think um, if they have a special showing the 26th, I want to try to go. Um, one of the theaters has the Freddy Fazbear pizza you can order, which I'm sure is just the most overpriced pizza for what you're probably getting. I'm like, we got to eat the Freddy Fazbear pizza. It's Watch not true if it doesn't Five come. Freddy's. If it doesn't come direct from like a Chuck E. Cheese, then I I call shenanigans. I don't. Know. I don't know. So that's cool. And then Animated Brass Con was this past weekend and just had a great time hanging out with my friends. Some family came down. Got to be. Uh, a pseudo put together doom guy outfit my helmet's still in repair but i rocked the rest of the costume and that was fun one weeb jeopardy or i should say my team one weeb jeopardy there was four <laughs> of us to a team we did a good job um 
you know, I would say every team member came in clutch, one one point or another. I had some good moments. I had some high highs, had some low lows. Uh, when I blatantly got how old Danny Phantom was wrong, I felt pretty bad. Uh, I even like sung it to the tune of his theme song, and I said he was just 16, and then the entire crowd turned against me in that moment because Danny Phantom is actually 14, and it was very embarrassing, but whatever. Wow. I'd rather be confidently wrong than unconfidently Right. Yeah, no, not really. Me confidently wrong kind of sucked because then, like, I felt like everybody in that room was going to kill me. To be fair, uh, as an adult, listen, like, watching anime or cartoons or anything, I always want the protagonists to not be teenagers. I always want them to be older than they're like. I agree. It's like, ah, yeah. oh, yes, this 14, like, Hunter, what is it? Hunter x Hunter. I have oh, a yeah. hard time getting into that because it's like, the two main characters are 12. And I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Like I, I do not want twelve-year-olds killing people on my TV. It's definitely. super dark, especially when one of them like definitely like Gone doesn't want to, but the other one is like, yeah, I'll murder anybody. Yeah. Like, okay, skateboard kid. All yeah. right, yes, <laughs> yeah. But Anime Nebraska was great. We had our big TF2 photo shoot meetup, which uh, almost got overtaken by the One Punch, uh, not One Punch, the One Piece meetup. But the official photographer, so these are both non-scheduled meetups, One Piece and the TF2 event. And so obviously we didn't know that each other were going to try to use the space. Of course, the One Piece meetup was bigger, but ours was cooler because the official photographer decided to shoot ours instead of the One Piece meetup. So get stunted on One Piece fans. Sorry, not sorry. TF2 is cooler. <laughs> uh, so that was fun. And then, yeah, just I bought some anime figures. Had a pretty rough go at it during the swap meet this year. Uh, long time listener of the podcast. No, I do love the swap meet. We uh, we tried again this year. Paperclip to something, you know, paperclip to a house type trade up swap meet. And I got instantly the anime statue that I wanted to buy or wanted to trade up for. I locked it in. I'm like, OK, I'm going to try to build up to that. And I'll be darned if he wasn't just the toughest customer and in all my wheeling and dealing, I ended up with quite a few things that I'm like, well, don't know what to do with this now. I've got some hot Cheeto sweatpants, Chun Li figure. Yeah, don't really know. Uh, <laughs> coolest thing I got was this engraved anime girl on a glass, which is pretty That's funny. I had no from. idea. <laughs> yeah, it's for all this random junk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That like that one uh, wall scroll anime flag thing that is definitely Ian's now. Uh, yeah, I just was trading. Well, because the, the guy that had the figure was like, I like wall scrolls. And he just looked like the kind of guy that would like, you know, that type of wall scroll. Right. Uh, You're like, so this is what he meant. Yeah. <laughs> he said the one thing. Uh, but this, I know what he meant. Yeah. I know what he meant. Come on. Uh, but he did not want that. No. So I ended up with a lot of stuff that I thought that that person would like. Um, and he did not like any of my offers. So I, now I just. I own it. I just own it. <laughs> now I just own these things. Uh, so, yeah. That's also where that sticker came from that I gave you, Simi. I don't even know. If I, you might have. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. So, yep. We tr I tried. I tried. It did not work. And that's okay. I'll but Anime Nebraska my, is always a fun time. I'll probably put it on my laptop, even though oh. uh, <laughs> the, the odd, oh, gosh. odd conversations that it might start, I'll have to explain. But, <laughs> just because it's funny enough. It is. It is pretty funny. Yeah. But that was uh, that was my week. It was just banger after banger, dude. It was just having a great time and living life, enjoying it. We did. We did go to the Barbie party room and it was everything I wanted it to be and more. And I'm not I'm not going to details about what happened inside the Barbie party room. But it was <laughs> it was pretty cool that they brought them back for a little bit. I don't know if they'll stick around for next Nebcon though the hotel manager that had the party rooms there was like I'm shutting these down at 12 a.m. You guys are insane and I was like oh you, the party's just getting started come on uh, so we'll see what happens but that's made me happy. We have like 30 previews from WizKids Hero Clicks to get into. Instead, we'll each uh, talk about three because there's just an insane amount of news. If you want to see all the new cool and crazy dials that have been shown, 
go to Facebook or Instagram. They're also on Instagram. Go to the WizKids Hero Clicks page there and check them out because they are the spoiler seasons are kind of crazy. Like if this is going to be a consistent thing they're going to keep doing, then you're going to see like basically anything that Scott Porter doesn't pull is going to like show up in a spoiler season. It's pretty awesome. So they're just showing off a ton of figures and dials from the set including legacy cards, which is kind of sick. So make sure that you're tuned in there cuz we're going to talk about just quite a few figures here. Oh, let's go. Sorry. I just saw the Giant Man has lab got funded. It's got three hours left, so they totally made it. Hopefully we get the stretch goals. We'll see. Anyways, uh Hero Clicks. Let's talk about it. Simeon, which one do you want to talk about first that they previewed this last week? Oh, I think I'm gonna start from my least most excited to most excited. So okay. the, the one they previewed that I want to talk about most, um, let me double check here. Okay, it is the Rare Prime Damon Hellstrom. So we saw this guy's figure at Worlds. They had him, like, the the sculpt on display. And now we get to see the actual dial. So he has the trait son of Satan. <laughs> Jeez. Dang. <laughs> I mean, technically... <laughs> Technically, it's not wrong, but who boy, that's a trait name. Uh, damage dealt to opposing characters within range and line of fire is penetrating, which I think I covered a character earlier when we did this. I can't remember which one. There was somebody where, like, if they had a flame marker under them, they took penetrating damage, and I was like, that's really cool. This guy just says anyone within six squares of him, any opposing character within six squares and line of fire of him takes penetrating damage now that counts for uh Ooh. poison that counts for uh, knockback it counts for any kind of thing that would say damage so yeah like penetrating knockback damage is insane like the thought of that is insane it has to be within his line of fire but that's not super hard to do he has six range one lightning bolt uh then he has a second part to that trait damon hellstrom only takes damage from attacks so he personally can't be knocked back, can't be poisoned, can't take Mystic's damage, nothing like that. Uh, so that's pretty interesting in itself. And then he has an attack power for his first five clicks. That is Flaming Trident, Energy Explosion, Quake, Giant Reach of two. So obviously if he's doing any of these, they're going to be within range and line of fire. So it's going to be Penetrating, Energy Explosion, Quake. Uh, pretty solid. Is... 60 so he's got 165 point line uh, his 100 point line starts with running shot his 65 point line starts on click four where he's got charge for two clicks so charge quake or running shot energy explosion depending on what you need he has defenders and mystics team ability i won't say his defense is impressive because it's just a static 18 the whole dial but i mean he can copy defense values from people that are higher or uh, just having like an 18 the whole dial is pretty solid as well. And then the last thing about him is he's got the special damage power, his whole dial, that is right in Satan's Flames. Range combat expert, uh, period, slash, slash. When Damon Hellstrom hits after resolutions, you may generate a fire smoke terrain marker in a hit target square. At the beginning of your next turn, even if this is lost, deal one damage to each character occupying that marker, then remove the marker. I'd really like to, at some point, get all of the people with the fire smoke terrain marker effects on a team. Like, build Ooh. a team with them. Like, look at what what combos with what because he specifically doesn't do anything outside of the normal fire smoke terrain marker and generation of it but uh, uh generate a smoke terrain so i think you can only make one but yeah so like top dial this uh special damage power for 100 points he is a eight speed running shot 11 attack three damage so he'd be a 12 for four because he has range combat expert it's going to be uh, penetrating damage because of his first trait. He can use energy explosion with that six range. It's pretty solid. He only takes damage from attacks, which is pretty cool. He can't reduce pen damage. So, like, if he goes against somebody that's just blasted him for a whole bunch, it's a little rough. But I really like this guy in sealed. 
And then, especially if he's being played with the Ghost Riders, because he has Mystics, he can give them that little boost. And then at 65 points, honestly, I might pay that like expensive 65 points to just let all of my friendly characters deal pen damage to an opposing force. I don't know yet. It's interesting. His uh, last three clicks... So on click five, he loses his invulnerability that he has clicks one through four, and he still has charge on click five. He goes to sidestep on click six and seven, and then poison from six to eight, phasing on his last click, which is click eight, and regen on click eight. And then he has super senses from five to seven. But yeah, that special damage power is whole dial, all eight clicks, three damage the whole dial, um, 11 attack all the way to click 5, and then he drops down to a 10 when he gets those poison clicks. It's an interesting dial. I don't hate it because at every point on that dial, he can potentially do 4 pen. Like, there's no point on the dial where he can't do 4 pen um, just because he has essentially ranged combat expert his whole dial, and then damage dealt to people within line of fire and range are is penetrating. So, I really like him. I don't know if he's, he's good cool. enough to build around, but I'm going to try. I think yeah. it'd be really fun to make like a super pen poison knockback kind of team. Maybe do something where it makes him giant or colossal so he can see everyone real easy. Yeah, I think the trick is like definitely giving him some way to have improved like targeting. I like him though, but just him being a prime is just the ever struggle of just being a prime in hero clicks where it's like yeah. oh man he's i think he's fun autoplay prime but in sealed yeah. probably yeah i think he's really good in sealed i think he's like insane just a 12 for four blasting people penetrating energy explosion I, l I love it actually it's really cool i think the only taking damage from attacks is a really unique ability they haven't given that to anyone before you know, maybe like, a, oh, this character can't be knocked back or whatever, or can't be dealt damage from poison, but just being like, okay, there is no ping damage with this guy. Where was he when Shredders were running around? You know, like, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> the whole only takes damage from attack. So I like that ability. It's really creative. But, yeah, I don't know. I do think defenders with an 18 the entire dial is good, though. We don't have a ton of defenders, but having a solid just 18 defense the entire dial to defend with is really good and would be solid on a defender's team if we start to flesh out that keyword. For sure, yeah. And, I mean, there's enough wild cards with, like, a 17 that can benefit from it. There's, like, you know, enough wild cards with higher point values that they can it can be useful. It's just not your... It's not the main reason you're building around. Right, the figure I want to talk about that we got to see this past week is definitely the surfing gingerbread man. Uh, if you know me, I'm a big fan of the gingerbread man they released last year. And this one, like I said before, if you spend $50 in the WizKids store, you can go ahead and just get one of these gingerbread men. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put my order here soon. I like him. I, I like him a lot. I think he's hilarious. So really quickly, his second trade is you can't catch me on the gingerbread man. It's the same as last year's gingerbread man. He uh, automatically breaks away. So it's not ignore his characters. I apologize. I almost said that. He automatically breaks away. He also gets mystics in the snowfall team ability, which is a wild card. This one is 40 points instead of the cheap 30 points, but this one's on a surfboard. So what else does he do? He has an entire dial of hypersonic speed. He's four clicks of life. He has starting probability control, which is cool. He only has like a 10 attack. He goes down to some nine attacks and then he has three clicks of super senses. But here's... Well, let me get into the trait before I get into his last click. He has a, I'll let you know, he has a stop click and he has perplex on the end, which is just so funny. So his first trait is surfing the sweet seas. When surfing gingerbread man moves, after resolutions, generate a water terrain marker in each square he moved through. Slash, slash, opposing characters within four squares that are occupying or adjacent to a water terrain marker, not one of his, just a water terrain marker, must roll for breakaway if they don't already need to. So he just, yeah, he makes an insane amount of water. He has a nine speed hypersonic speed top dial of just making water. So if you're loving 
the camo, the king shark, all this stuff. Maybe you lose your map roll. You're not able to go on the cool Atlantis map from the Harley Quinn, like the Poison Ivy play at home kit. Instead, it's just like, boom, oh, that's okay. I got Surfing Gingerbread Man. Now, to be fair, he's Santa's Workshop Mystical and Speedster, so probably not a lot of shared keywords, but still really, really cool the insane amount of water he makes by surfing the sweet seas, which is just hilarious. And, of course, he is a uh, dolphin symbol piece, which is funny. Yeah. So his stop click, which is I think I, it's very on the nose, it's very cute, is so it's called Herald of the Holidays, Stop, Flight, Cosmic Energy, Team Ability. Interesting. What what Herald could possibly uh, have a surfboard? Hmm. <laughs> very cute. Very, very cute. I'm not going to spell it out for you, listener. I think, I think you got it. Uh, but I just think it's hilarious that he gets, yeah, Flight, Cosmic Energy, or, yeah, Cosmic Energy Team Ability. Then he gets some buffed stats. He gets his first three damage, his first 11 attack, and he's got a Perplex with an 18 defense. The only thing that's low is his speed goes down. But, yeah, Herald of the Holidays. I so wish they would have given him the Herald keyword now. But the pun itself is just... So funny. And then he has the classic John Doe real name, which is, again, chef's kiss. I love it. Thank you, WizKids. Yeah. Another one to add to my Gingerbread Man collection. But that's that's Gingerbread Man, a non-wheels character, but a very fun piece. They just We just finally got to see a dial for. Yeah, I'm very impressed with it. I think it's fun. Um, and I'm glad that they've got, for some reason... We're finally getting what just seems like an insane amount of water stuff. Yeah. Not just like characters, but like terrain and maps. We finally got like our first map, big map that uh, is all water again. So it'll be exciting to have all that going on. All right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to choose from in WizKids. Good old spoiler week. Spoiler week. There's so much good there's, stuff. Yeah, if you're not following the WizKids HeroClix page, uh, that's a mistake. You should absolutely be doing that. Uh, there's no reason not to. If you're not on Facebook, um, yeah, they're, they're on Instagram. I haven't checked their Twitter, but I assume that they're posting to Twitter, too. So, yeah. I don't know if there's a WizKids HeroClix Twitter, actually. I don't know that. Uh, maybe not, but definitely on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And, this was, I think, one of the most hype pieces that people were interested in, and uh, it is Schleipnir. Schleipnir. I don't know how it's pronounced. It's Norse. So this is Loki's child slash Odin's steed. Oh, depending you, on the, I, yeah. hate, <laughs> I hate referencing it as Loki's child. I mean, oh, that's, but you're right. You're yeah, not wrong. That's the that's the the story. Um, yeah, according to mythology. So old sleep near here has the Asgardian animal and deity keywords, cosmic energy team ability. It has the pilot trait, Odin as guardian and deity, which is two massive, massive options. Odin, obviously like maybe in like silver age or golden age, like a lot of options, not a ton of actually, I don't even know how many options there are in silver age. I mean, outside of the mighty Thor, I guess the mighty Thor, has quite a few but um yeah odin as guardian de and deity are the three things that you're looking for for piloting uh and again pilot is when revealing your force you may choose a single base character on your sideline that is named odin or has the as guardian or deity keywords or deity keyword doesn't have to have both and turn it to any click sleep near can use the standard attack and damage powers displayed on that character's dial when sleep near is KO'd before removing him from the map generate the chosen character from your sideline on its last non KO click this game that character can't be healed or replaced and isn't scored when KO'd protected pulse wave so that's the the pilot trait we've seen that before uh, the actual dial Sleep Near has improved movement through characters. It's got the flight symbol and the giant symbol. Comes in at 125 points for 8 clicks or 60 points for 4 clicks. The 125 points boasts a big ol' 10 attack, or jeez, 10 speed, 11 attack, 18 defense, and 4 damage. 
the speed and damage power are special, and then it's got Quake and Impervious. And the only thing that changes for the 60-point line is instead of Impervious, you've got Invulnerability. Otherwise, you have that same speed power and damage power. And that is the speed power is Valhalla. I'm coming. Charge. When Sleep Near uses it after resolutions, you may generate the character chosen for his pilot trait from your sideline on its last non-KO click, and that character may make a close attack. If you do and hit after resolutions, return that character to your sideline on any click. Otherwise, remove that character from the game without scoring it, which is rough. If you miss this attack, <laughs> that is bad. Um, so I would definitely, when you're looking at deities as guardians, what have you, I would definitely look at somebody with a high attack value, maybe a prob, uh, those kind of things, or just have enough prob on your team where, yeah, you want sleep near to charge and hit. And then you want, I guess, no, you don't have to hit. You just have to charge and then you get to generate, um, but yeah, definitely want that, uh, pilot to hit. Otherwise they're removed from the game. So that's rough. And then the uh, special damage power is eight legged steed. And sleep near or the chosen for its pilot trait attacks. Chosen character, character chosen for its pilot trait attacks. Attack rolls of eight are critical hits. So that's a three and a five, a two and a six, uh, a one and a seven, if you can swing that somehow, or a four and a four. Um, it's actually quite a few of the, like, quite a few rolls roll up to eight. Uh, and that becomes a critical hit. Pretty cool power. I think it's worth it for 60. I'm not sure how many lot. times it's going to pop off at a 125, but 125 isn't that big of an investment where I'm like mad. And then the giant size giving me, you know, that colossal willpower where I'm just able to charge, 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 always bring out like a secondary person to attack. I didn't look up ahead of time to see who all this can pull in, but I assume with the deity keyword. There's quite a few options. I'm just going to pop it in real quick. Deity, uh, we've got, well, Conchu is probably not going to be done. But, uh, yeah, there's Nightmare, Zadkiel, Lilith, Lilith, Hela, the legacy Hela. Necron's deity. Well, Ooh, he can't, of course he can't he is. heal, so <laughs> there's not, not a great reason to pop him in. I guess he can does it say... Uh, on the sideline and lost non-KO click. So you want someone with a really good non-KO click. Um, you could get the deceased Wonder Woman on her. You can't do the the zombie three clicks, but you can do the flurry, prob, and ten attack blades. That's not terrible. You can do, let's see, Dark Phoenix. Ooh, that's a bad click. Nope, don't want to do that. Ooh, oof. Yeah. <laughs> There's there's some rough ones in the uh, legacy department for sure, where it's just like eight, seven attack kind of stuff. Uh, Carnage Thor is a 12 for four with exploit and what's his attack power? Steel energy pulse wave when Carnage Thor uses pulse wave. If an opposing character was KO'd this turn, he deals two damage instead of one. So yeah, if you charge in with sleep near... Well, maybe you don't want, <laughs> you don't want to charge in and then pulse wave yourself, I guess. But... A 12 for 4 is still interesting with triple lightning bolts. Ooh, and then Gwen, Goddess of Thunder. Now she makes her debut for sure. I think that's got to be like the pick for sure is uh, Gwen, Goddess of Thunder. She's a 12 oh, for 4, Quake, Prob, Invincible. Mm, that is pretty good. Yeah. That might have to be. Yeah. There's a lot of options though. Um, and whether you're looking at the bottom dial for the bring them in from the sideline or generate them not bring them in from the sideline or you're looking at them for the attack and damage power that you can pick um, either way it's interesting something like moon knight the 200 point le moon knight where you could get like midway into the game and then switch which click you are using and suddenly you've got like steel energy is really interesting uh, okay yeah the last three clicks uh, you lose the special speed power and damage power with old sleep near here, and you get hypersonic, quake, invulnerability, and empower. But I don't hate that bottom dial. Actually, I think 60 points is a really good, really solid tertiary attacker and then support kind of figure, whereas the top dial is like 
you this is a problem that you have to deal with and i really like that about this figure plus the sculpt it looks or the rendering of it looks cool i don't think i've actually held this sculpt in my hand i know people at worlds did but i was not one of yeah. them he is pretty sick i like it i love the if you roll an eight it's a critical hit like that's just hilarious i think the idea of it hitting you with all eight of its hooves is a funny image i think it's awesome hooves getting getting messed up so yeah i i absolutely love this piece i think it's awesome it's also like the pilot trait figure that feels the most like this is a vehicle that right. someone because there's no writer on it like there's yeah, nobody that's this one specifically it doesn't like have somebody on it yet like it's kind of weird the idea that hulk is in the sidecar or something that cap wolf is on you know like that's kind of awkward i feel like for like some of the rider traits but this one is like oh yeah this is just straight up the horse so if you want to ride the horse then here you go you know like it definitely feels the most like oh yes this is a vehicle this is how new vehicles work i will say definitely to me so i think it's cool i like it i wish we would have gotten odin in the set to go along with it but maybe yeah. that's uh Ooh, of see, things to come. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, Ooh. Let's see. The Mighty Secret Wars Thor? Battleworld. Because it was Iron Allfather before. Yeah. So, yeah. Secret Wars Iron Battleworld World. was the last World. Odin. The uh, Avengers 10 million BC chase. And then before that, it was the Ragnarok movie ones. And then Odin Ooh. the Destroyer, which doesn't count. The chase Odin yeah. from uh, Mighty Thor. Yeah, there's there's not a ton of just straight up Odin is his name kind of things. He's a pretty low made figure. Yeah, what is this like 10, 15 versions of Odin, I guess, throughout all of Hero Clicks. Yeah. To be fair, it's, it's pretty low. Between both companies, there's only 3 Zeuses. There's Ooh. two DC and one Marvel. So, okay. Yeah. Also a very underutilized father of the gods wow. I, I recently read a comic where zeus just absolutely annihilates the hulk which i mean call me call me a hulk hater yeah. or whatever but i love seeing the hulk put in his place occasionally because i after like world war hulk anyone that could just like put the hulk down and like actually you know just yeah. be strong and not have to get stronger because the hulk comes back to challenge zeus after getting madder he like Zeus slaps him off of like the Olympus or whatever, and Hulk comes back and Zeus just does it again. He just like punches him so hard that like he starts like spitting no out like green blood, and it's like yes, thank you, thank you for putting the Hulk in his place. He's I agree. Man. I think Hulk power scaling just goes up randomly, yeah. insanely high. So I do like, and it shows like yeah, he's a god. Like come on, so absolutely the. Next figure I'm going to go ahead and talk about is a legacy figure, one that as soon as it was announced, I was like, oh, man, thank goodness I own this piece. I was a real one, always a fan forever. Uh, I've had this piece pretty much since it came out. Uh, it is Man-Thing and Howard the Duck. This is so sick that this gets a legacy card. We already get so few Howard the Ducks and then also so few Man Things that one of my all-time favorite duo figures they ever made, Man Thing and Howard the Duck, gets to be remade as a legacy card. They also shave 72 points off of it, which is very, very nice of them. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, he used to be 152 points, ladies and gentlemen. Used to be ridiculous. But I love that old piece. It was a ton of fun. So what do we do? What do we do with Banting Howard the Duck? I'm not going to read the pilot trait, but just so you know, the pilots can be Howard the Duck or an animal. So it looks like it's somebody is steering man thing, which is really funny that they get the pilot trait. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and it also kind of shows that, yeah, man things doing the bulk of the work here. And then Howard maybe pops out. Wow. And punches him, shoots him or something. And then just hops right back on man thing. It's kind of cool. So that's kind of fun. I enjoy it. They have a special damage power. So, like, this old version used to have all sorts of, like, cool stuff. Uh, they used to have just, like, straight-up traded perplex, which is one of my favorite traits back in the day. Um, so their special damage power is Guardians of the Nexus. 
Probability Control, Manthing and the Howard Duck use it to target a friendly character, making an attack, and the finalized attack is a miss. After resolutions, the target character may make an attack. Ooh. Interesting. And then slash slash Manthing and Howard the Duck deal penetrating damage. I love it. This is pretty sick. So whenever they target a friendly character and that they miss. Ooh, the target character can make an attack. It's a little scary. Uh, the fact that if you if you miss, then just like the opponent gets to then punch you. So a little uh, a little scary. Won't lie, a little scary. But it's kind of a fun ability, especially if it keeps their point cost low. I think it's kind of hilarious. And then it's also they just straight up deal penetrating damage. And also keep in mind they are dolphin symbol. So there's that. So that's on their first three clicks of life. After that, they have a couple of middling clicks when they get some charge finally, but it's still some charge exploit clicks, which I think are nice. Um, they lose their invulnerability and they got some combat reflexes. And then this, I think, is hilarious because so many people like joke about it or say it when they start choosing who they think should be a legacy character and everything, which is like Manthing and Howard the Duck have three special powers right at the end in their attack powers. And I think a lot of the time when people say, oh, this should be a legacy card or this should be a legacy card. And it's like, oh, what do you do with like, but it'll be a ridiculous like five end clicks of a special power. And like, oh, I just make it a stop click. But they actually did it with this one. So Man Thing and Howard the Duck just have three stop clicks uh, on their attack power right at the end of their dial, which again, it is hilarious. It is stop. And then Man Thing and Howard the Duck can't be targeted by non-adjacent characters uh and i love this because they actually had another ability which was like trapped in a world i never made or whatever where they couldn't be targeted by non-adjacent characters which is really cool yeah. so yeah not only is it a stop click then you can't target them unless you're right next to them and they have that defender's ability their defense never goes above a 17 so there is a certain person that we talked about earlier that could really help man thing and howard the duck out especially when they have combat reflexes down dial uh, is the dial amazing? No, not really. It is not amazing. But is it fun and cool? And is it like one of my all-time favorite characters? And I think very on-brand for Man Thing, Howard the Duck. Uh, yes, it absolutely is. I think it's really fun. So with the speed power being only phasing top dial and they have super strength, they got some ways to like phase up, pick up an object, throw it at people for some penetrating damage. Or you can give them some equipment and give them some movement attack. That's a very real possibility. And then I think their prod power is just hilarious. Uh, what animal do we have drive the ship? Well, first off, Howard the Duck, not a bad pick. He has Precision Strike and Perplex or Precision Strike and Outwit, depending on where you want to put him on his dial. And then when you want to like pop him out, he does have RCE and he can use prop, but only target himself. So the new Howard is pretty solid. I think Reptil, a lot of people have said Reptil, he's really good because of his not being able to die, really. So his last kick is an 11 for 2 precision strike, which is nice. Uh, a little hypersonic speed, shape change, toughness. And whenever he dies, it's like a 50-50 to just turn him to any other click, which is pretty cool. So it's not healing. And then... Uh, just a beefy, heavy hitter. Gorilla Grodd is a 12 for 4, 19 defense, toughness, battle fury, flurry uh, on his last click, which is oh, pretty solid to me. Pop out, wail on somebody. Uh, and then Simeon, you mentioned. Yeah. And then Simeon, you mentioned Cosmo, who is a 12 attack blades battle fury on his last click. Little charge, willpower. So. I think there's some solid animals. I think there's just way better animal options off in the land of the Silver Age. But for just getting one of my all-time favorite, like, not only duos, but favorite figures ever back in a modern, and they're pretty dang fun. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with Manthing and Howard the Duck. I'm, yeah, I'm glad to see him. Also, Howard's name is Howard Duck Son in, in this. So I don't know what comic I missed that Howard Duck, like, his last name is Duck Son. Um, but it used to just, they would just call him Howard, or there was even a joke that his middle name was The, um, and all sorts of stuff. Like, it was Howard T. Duck um, for the longest time in comics, so I guess he's now Howard Duck Son. Um, and then they finally, unlike the first time, they give Ted Salas his doctor title. So he is Dr. Ted Salas, which is, put some Odd, respect on my, yeah. The Howard the Duck figure we have in the set, the common Howard the Duck, his real name is just listed as Howard is it really? Okay, yeah. yeah. Interesting. 
No hmm. ducks and I don't. Yeah, I duck. don't know. Howard, what are what are you, man? What is your last name? You're such a an enigma wrapped in mystery, Howard the Duck. Mm. All right, the last figure I'm going to go over in this our preview uh, season. Uh, it's one of my favorite sculpts in the set. Probably not the best sculpt in the set. I'm not going to lie to myself, but I I really do enjoy what they did with it. And that is, of course, Wolverine. He's a chase. Why wouldn't he be? Got to always chase something right from every set. So Wolverine comes in with the Alpha Flight, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, Animal, Martial Artist, Soldier, Vehicle Keywords, X-Men Team Ability, number 054. He's got a 95-point line and a 60-point line. And he has, of course, the pilot trait, so it's got all the same pilot things. But for Wolverine, real name, uh, or not real name, they don't do that anymore, just named Wolverine, uh, keywords Alpha Flight or X-Men. So I really like the Alpha Flight option, even though there's almost no Alpha Flight in modern. Um, X-Men will always have good options, and then even just Wolverine will have good options, but Wolverine just doubles down on X-Men almost every single time. Because, like, even if you're doing, yeah. like, Laura Kinney, there's almost a 100% chance that that's going to also be X-Men, I feel like. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's the, the two keywords that make the most sense to me, specifically. I wouldn't have wanted X-Force. This is, like, a, a classic-looking Wolverine. He's kind of got, like, a tracksuit on instead of, like, his normal leather jacket. But um, he's doing, like, the pivot point with the motorcycle where he's using his claws yeah. to yeah. do, like, a 180. Or something. Your X Men Origins Wolverine maneuver yeah. against Maverick or whoever was in the helicopter. I forget during that scene, but yeah, it was yeah, pretty sick. It was uh, Agent Zero, I think, is who Agent that was. Zero. Okay, uh, just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's incredible a, movie, incredible work movie. of cinema. Yeah, yeah um, of course, of course. So yeah, he's got that pilot trait he's got a second trait that's called played with fire when wolverine moves after resolutions he may choose up to two non-debris terrain markers adjacent to any square he moved through and place them adjacent to himself so that's going to include the smoke fire terrain markers that's going to include water terrain blocking uh elevated anything he can just move any two non-debris terrain markers so what'll be really funny is playing this guy and moving and then like replacing one of those like three by three, like those massive terrain pieces. That's going to be funny. Um, Can't wait to do that. So that's his two traits. Uh, He has a special speed power for his first four clicks. His first click of his 60 point line is also that. So that's click four. And then uh, obviously the first three clicks that are the differential between the 95 and 60 point line. So a 35 point for three clicks differential there and then his last three clicks he gets that special uh, speed power again and that is i hope you have good insurance bub hypersonic speed when wolverine uses it and hits after resolutions and until your next turn hit targets modify speed negative three and can't use speed powers i think can't use speed powers is enough but modifying speed negative three is insane because even if They are playing like that super rare Ghost Rider, and it's like, oh, you say I can't use this, but I say like I can, or whatever that Ghost Rider does. Um, A negative three to like uh, an eight speed charge is one square charge. (laughs) A negative three to a nine square running shot is two squares. It is insane what a negative three does. But yeah, also just can't use speed powers is pretty fun. Especially if it's something good like, uh, yeah, like traded mind control or like charge flurry, anything like that. So I really like that. He's got hypersonic, that special hypersonic speed power on both starting lines. Uh, it's either a nine speed for 95 points or an eight speed for 60. He has a 12 for four with blades and exploit for 95 or a 11 for three blades exploit for 60. And then he's got impervious on both starting line so impervious from clicks one through four on click five he loses that speed power and then instantly gains his road rage power that he keeps for the rest of his dial so from clicks five through ten he has battle fury and exploit weakness as his damage power so he goes from 
impervious to toughness. He gets charge instead of that hypersonic for clicks 5 through 7 with 11 attack and blades. And then on clicks 8, 9, and 10, he goes back to that special hypersonic power while he has Battle Fury exploit. It's a really solid dial, and he almost has like a pseudo zombie dial that we saw like with the deceased characters because that like last three clicks is all special power it seems like he's got regen he has uh, a 17 regen that goes to an 18 regen that goes to a 19 from click 8 through 10 so ending with a 19 regeneration an 11 attack with blades and a 2 damage with battle fury exploit and then of course if for some reason you want to heal him up with the X-Men team ability, that's always an option. Uh, but I, I really like this guy. Um, obviously, he doesn't have like the way to spit his pilot out easily. But just being able to pick attack and damage powers, I think, will give him plenty of extra life. There's a ton of stuff to choose from. I know the uh, the Hound from the Masters of Evil, just giving him the option for like a full dial of steel energy is pretty insane. And then... Um, yeah, the the moving terrain is pretty crazy with his hypersonic, so it doesn't really interact with his hypersonic, but it technically works with it. So if you need to remove terrain or place terrain, so if you want to do like the prime Spider-Man kind of combo where you like charge up, drop the elevated underneath King Killmonger or whoever to break adjacency, this Wolverine mm. just also does that. So that's kind of insane, but um, yeah, then he also just takes away speed powers and gives him minus three speed to anyone he hits, which I think is fun. That's like, that's like a whole like popping the tires of the Humvees as they drive by. Is that what that is? I don't think he ever. Oh, said that sounds that line, right. But I mean, yeah, that's... that was the one thing that I'm like, would Wolverine ever say? I hope you have good insurance, but no, maybe, maybe he's out probably to like Cyclops. Club. As he like wrecks yeah. Cyclops' car or something, yeah, yeah, he just, yeah, tears a hole through. The, I made the it into a convertible bub. Ooh, classic! That's he, now that's that that's like a good line series, right? Yeah, peak animated series Wolverine was just punch Cyclops out of nowhere, ruin his car, simp over Jean Grey. Just classic animated series Wolverine things to do. Use tree branches as weapons, just ah, so good. But yeah, like the. I hope you have good insurance. It's just so funny to imagine Wolverine saying that and then just doing something cool. But I like this. This is like, I don't know. It's a fun dial. It's cool. We don't get Wolverine with Impervious a lot, but really it makes sense. We just kind of think about like the dudes. I mean, what are his bones, Simeon? Oh, I I believe they're made of metal. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So I could see him like reducing damage and yeah then he's got his classic gotta have some regen no special regen but this is more of a wolverine on a bike doing cool things versus a standard special regen type of wolverine but then yeah no full dial of blades who it's, we haven't it's had a wolverine a great full dial of blades for, uh, in uh, years piloting, actually an interesting option for piloting him is leech because if you send this wolverine out and you like stick him in okay. their face blah 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 not only do they have to take care of him, because if they don't, then he's going to do a bunch of stuff. But if they do KO him, they also have to same turn kill Leech. Otherwise, Leech is just like adjacent to them. I don't hmm. know. Yeah, that's something I'll that's try. Fair. The like legacy one. Is he well? Is legacy legacy Leech isn't still modern? I guess. Uh, um. Yeah, he is. He's an X of Swords legacy Leech. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Never mind then. Yeah. Yeah, so that's go nuts. I mean, that's probably the worst pilot because the only thing you can get is a outwit. Yeah, you're not really him, gonna. You're not gonna attack. It is. It is funny, um, and it's not something you really want to carry. So yeah, yeah. I think you go uh, uncanny X Men zero zero six Wolverine because he's a thirteen attack blades, uh, fourteen defense, one damage battle fury and flurry. Uh, that's so funny. Uncanny X Men. Which one is this? Cla- this is zero zero six. This is double. This is like the common from Uncanny X Men. Oh, the okay. That's his like um, all new, all the different. Five click one, right? Where you like yeah. come back from the dead and yeah. be on that click. Yeah, 
I didn't realize his stats were that crazy. That's yeah, that's it's honestly, they're just insane. There's yeah. his attack being a thirteen, his defense being a fourteen is so funny. There's an endless number of uh, X Men that you can choose from. Honestly, it's also not modern, but uh, the Wolverine. What is it? Uh, is it the Agent of Agent of Shield Wolverine that does it? Uh, no, that's the one that chooses the mark at the beginning of the game. Um, maybe it's the it might be one of the Fantastic Four ones that like just doesn't die. Yeah, the I don't stay down easy. The super rare from oh, Fantastic like, Four. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so in like a Silver Age, if you're playing like a Fantastic Four team, and also this character that breaks Fantastic Four keyword. Uh yeah, I don't know. There's an option there though. Break. There's a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, go nuts. But he's so cool. I think he's fun. Yeah, I really enjoy it, and I, I can't wait to get this sculpt. It's just oh, such yeah. an iconic kind of look. Wolverine on motorcycle does not happen often enough. It's sad but true. But like we're so used to seeing like Wolverine on like a motorcycle, and it's like, huh, never get him on a motorcycle in Hero Clicks, and finally we do doing his sick X Men Origins Wolverine maneuver. <laughs> what a guy! Classic. Uh. And the last figure that I want to talk about. That's, that's pretty the, crazy. This is my son's bike with the, the normal suspension. You, steps, you're quite a bit heavier than you look. <laughs> the idea that's just uh, scraping against the ground because he weighs like 300, 400 pounds because his bones are metal is so funny. The the scene in the bathroom. Well, the entire bathroom scene is hilarious because oh he wrecks it. But uh Oh, peak yeah. cinema right there, Simeon. Oh, these claws. Oh, what do I do? Oh, whoopsies. I made a mess Why? of the bathroom. But oh, like, what, what am when I he steps doing on the weight I, scale, too. I just happen uh, to be bouncing these claws off of each other, and they're sparking. Like, I'm playing with two lightsabers or something in my in the bathroom. And then, yeah. I, gosh. Yeah. Wolverine forgetting he also has brain cells is, like, really funny. <laughs> just, yeah. Yes. He's just destroying the... Oh, it's so funny. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, worth a rewatch. You heard it here, folks. Go rewatch X Men Origins Wolverine. Such a high quality, top tier movie, and they used they used every comic character in that movie. I would say to the fullest of their ability. I I think if they ever use them again, they're not going to stand up to the way they are portrayed in X Men Origins Wolverine. Ob- obviously, of course. <clears throat> On, but unironically, though, no, but like totally unironically, you should totally go watch X Men Origins Wolverine. So good. Also, uh, play the game ugh. if you have a it's probably Game better. Cube? Ooh, come out on PS2, GameCube, GameCube PS2, PS2, that yeah. era. Okay. It's a really fun game. Uh, also, uh, it's like one of the only acting roles that uh, Will I Am ever had. What? Oh, yeah. As Wraith. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, Wraith. Is there any? Uh, which is it's funny. Wraith actually exists exists in the uh, Marvel universe, um, but it's definitely not Will I Am. It's like a, no, it's a, so some sad. lady. The the game does it have a motorcycle level? The Wolverine game? Surprisingly, no. This it is, is so sad. It has the the classic Aztec level. Uh, where you're fighting against like stone people of Aztec lore, you know, as like Indiana Jones would, but no, no uh, motorcycle level. Uh, the last figure that we're going to talk about is honestly, I know you're going to be surprised, but Calder of all the chases and superheroes and primes that were shown off, this is what you want to talk about for Wheels of Vengeance, and the answer is yes, listener. Uh, I'm going to talk about the rare Iron Fist. We have not gotten an Iron Fist since Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage. Double checking. So. Yeah, double checking. Serpent, yeah, somewhere on there. So uh, whatever um, the serpent guy was that the, like, then, was the alternate. Yeah, so yeah, Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage. So we don't have a modern Iron Fist. We finally have one. And Iron Fist has always been one of those characters where I think there has been a definitive iconic version but it's been so long since that version. And I would say the only one. So uh, first off, the first Iron Fist I ever had was, of course, the Secret Invasion Iron Fist, who I thought was when I first got him an iconic definitive Iron Fist. Looking back now, uh, no, 
Obviously, no, he's not. But he's still cool, and I still really like him. The second definitive version of Iron Fist, I would say, was the Fear Itself common Iron Ooh, Fist. Yeah. And this one I do think. But the only bad the thing is, is he's uh, yeah, he's gold and white versus yellow and green. But I love this version. I It's still probably my definitive version. Uh, I'll shout out the Age of Ultron common as well. I think he's probably a very solid Iron Fist, but I think he's like lacking what makes like a definitive Iron Fist. But this one, this is easily my new definitive Iron Fist. Like, you don't have to make the crazy 200 point fanboy dials to make a definitive version of the character. I think Iron Fist is best in the sub 100 points category. And I think this is like literally like the perfect Iron Fist. I absolutely love him so let's get into the dial it's simple it's to the point it's danny rand baby and he's here to kick butt take names sworn enemy of the hand defender of kun loon himself uh full dial exploit full dial precision strike like iron fish should have perfect love yep. it full dial of super senses perfect i dig it prob i'd be okay if it was like super senses and like combat reflexes but i'll take a full yeah. dial of super senses that's solid true Special speed power, charge force blast, force blast as free, but only to target an adjacent character. I love it so much. Of course, he should have charge. The I like the idea of the extra force blast being like there's one punch and there's like a chi like punch blow, like a palm strike punch yeah. almost. Uh, I think that's so sick. I love the so idea just... of because like Iron Fist quite often will take on like multiple combatants and from like martial arts movies that like kung fu movies whatever you call them um something that you'll notice quite often is like when like protagonist takes on multiple characters they'll like shove one back yeah like, like punch a few times shove someone back someone else comes in they'll like punch a few times shove them back like because you have to keep distance when you're like fighting multiple people i know because i've fought multiple people every day all the time yeah, like Classic multiple Simi people attack do. me every day, so I I know how this is, but no, it, it is really cool that I could charge, knock this person back, and then also end adjacent to someone else, free, knock them back, or I could charge, knock somebody that's adjacent to me back into a wall, knock them back into that wall again, like I could do like two extra. That is pretty damage. hilarious. I really like that option. Um, so like, not only is it like interesting in the competitive sense, but it's also just like really thematically cool. It's dope. So had to just, that's his base style. Here are his two traits, which again, I absolutely love master of breathing techniques is the first one. So We, we have our very first ham on iron fist here. Uh, willpower slash slash opposing characters within four squares that can use willpower only succeed on a six i like this a lot this is a very good counter to Everything. monster or i should say monster but yeah it's a very good counter to just willpower in general uh, but especially giants that only fail on a one through two so this is pretty big i like this i like this a lot and i think it makes him a good sealed piece with all the cosmic energy in this set and a few of the other things so pretty cool Honestly, second trait is yeah yeah, no, I just I just think I it's cool, say, and honestly, I like the like, yeah the very zen as well of him. Like, oh yeah, in constructed within 100%. four squares can't use willpower, might shut down a lot of stuff, and yeah. rightfully so. It's good, and I think willpower has been such a strong power ever since it like to change. So it's like yeah, it's good. Second trait is amazing for as to to coin an old WizKids phrase, intra and inter set balance. This is just a, such a dope power. So it's besting Shao Lao, the undying. When Iron Fist attacks one or more opposing characters, modify his attack value plus two. If any of the targets are multi-base or have one of more of the following, giant symbol, colossal symbol, or the monster keyword. So... He's a 12 attack top dial, or he's a 14 attack. So sealed in the set, every single booster comes with a multi-base figure. So boom, there's Iron Fist target number one. Uh, second, there is a few giants in the set, and we know Kathan is a colossal, so that's also cool. But also outside the set, giants, colossals, and of course, back to inside the set, the monster keyword is like 
80 oh, percent of this yeah. set like it's all over so the interset balance and the outras whatever intra enter set balances are off the charts and i absolutely love it this dude is like a number one sealed pick pull him play him like he's gnarly and then yeah he's just so fun i think it's still thematic outside of just like uh, he's a monster killer whatever sure yeah iron fist had to best the dragon like that's so sick so i love it the keywords they are very very solid except for just one so avengers defenders heroes for hire kunlun martial artist mystical Whoa. i would have loved to see marvel knights it's a bit of a bummer we don't have it but everywhere else great keywords amazing dial this is my iron fist and he's a team player which is just fitting for danny overall but oh, yeah wow this uh, iron fist is dope there is i didn't even realize so you said kun lun i didn't realize that was a keyword so outside of this iron fist we have the what is there four of course like all the other iron fists so like the one from uh spider-man venom absolute carnage steel serpent from the main the other like Okay. He was the uncommon version of Iron Fist in that set. Blackheath from Blackheath. Captain America and the Avengers. Why? I what? don't know. Oh. Maybe he spent I missed, some time there. I missed his going to kind of learn to train yeah. our Rambo a uh, movie that he had. Okay. Avengers Defenders War uh, Iron Fist. Age of Ultron Iron Fist. And then okay. the first three... Not at all Iron Fist. So Avengers vs. X Men, Hope Summers, Hope Summers, Lay Kung the Thunderer, and White Phoenix Hope all had Kun Lun. Uh, you know, I think Wild. they they hide her out in Kun Lun during Avengers vs. Yeah. X Men, right? Huh. Man. Okay. It's funny that they, they started with Avengers vs. X Men, which, gosh, don't know what year that came out, but. 2013, 2014, like, maybe? Two years later, there? they were like, oh, better add Kun Lun to Iron Fist from Age of Ultron. And then, like, two years later, when Avengers vs. Defenders came out, or a, a year later, when Avengers vs. Defenders came out, they're like, better put it on the Fast Forces and main set Iron Fist from this set. And then it wasn't course. again until Captain America, which came out in, like, 2020, so, like, three years. And they're like, yeah. Black Heath needs it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to whoever did the research that realized Blackheath oh, needs man. to have Kun Lun for some reason. What? Gosh. That's... Wow. Don't let that slip through the cracks. Give it to as many people as we can. I, I do love keywords that just like only fit like a very specific niche and like 90% are the same person. Gosh, that's fun. Kun Lun as a keyword. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Well, Maybe yeah. we'll get, we'll get Cobra back, but... at some point. We'll get um cheese. Oh, I don't know. Will we? We'll get MCU well, uh Mandarin. Did he hang out? In oh Kong? yeah. Was did he ever go there? I don't know. Uh was I don't that, think so. What was that? They city went to a different mystical in? city. They was were that in... a different mystical well, no, city? No, it wasn't wasn't Kun Lun though. Yeah, I don't uh, think it was Kun Lun. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it is. This is uh yeah, but I love this Iron Fist. I literally can't say enough nice things about him. And he has like a 30-point line, which is just so yeah. sick. So for 30 points, he has all those same powers I talked about, except literally all his stats go down by one, except his speed goes down by two on that starting line. So if you want a cheap 30-point, yo, here's Danny, then here is your counter to willpower, and you're carry him up a million squares free force blast, which is sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love. I love Iron Fist. And he's pulp. And he's freaking pulp, too, which yeah. Frogman isn't. So more free pulp force blast, which I love. I love the idea. Uh, yeah, charge. I just love this Iron Fist. I, like, charge, I hit, or I miss. And, like, they don't have a reducer. If I hit, they're not only taking, like, minimum two, but then also, like, force blast, I'm knocking them into a wall, and then potentially force blast is free if they're still adjacent into the same wall for another one. Or I just, like, yeah. charge, miss, and then I still, like, knock him back. I really enjoy that. That's real fun. But that is, and like we said in the beginning, there's so much Wheels of Vengeance that they just yeah. showed off. Um, they even showed they showed off the Legacy uh, card. Or, Zadkiel. Or yeah, there you go. Ninkantu, the, the mummy guy that mm, does not bring cool. in other mummies, but he, he is a mummy guy. Um, Black Talon. 
the Legacy Black Talon Chicken Man. Uh, big shout out to that. I do one. love that they Legacy the Chicken Man Black Talon, and he's got a, such a neat ability. I like it a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I I'm glad they did not just redo what he used to do. Cause yeah, just mind control friendly. Mind control is nuts. Yeah, uh, Spider Night Chase was shown off. Brother Voodoo, I think we had already seen, but he was shown off. Uh, yeah. Or maybe we only saw the Prime version because Scott pulled the Prime, but this is the non Prime. And then, uh, yeah, there's, you know, all the stuff that we were missing. I don't think the full set has been released, but mm. at this point, almost all the like super rares and primes have been shown. I will so. say another thing that's really cool. I'm not going to get into his dial, but I think he's dope. This, this version of Spider Knight, his appearance is the ultimate spider-man tv show season three episode 11 is his special is his appearance on his card so not not an animated series like it's not an animated series set but this is an animated series character that is thrown into it much like the harley quinn but it's not like a sub theme it's just like boom this one-off character in the set is from that like disney xd show so it's part of like the heroes of smash type universe of those like disney xd ultimate spider-man also fun fact ultimate spider-man is voiced by drake bell huh who would have thunk yeah kind of funny but yeah like that's his significant that's his appearance which is kind of neat so maybe that puts some more stuff on the table i hope personally like that'd be cool wild guess who played j jonah jameson in that uh was it just uh, I, I almost jokingly was going to be like, oh, was it Scott Porter? Um, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it was no. not Scott Porter. No. That would have been funny, though. Yeah. No. It was now just... I can't think of his name, but Omni Man slash. Yeah. It was just J.K. J. Simmons, the guy. J.K. J. Simmons, thank you. The oh, only geez. person who is allowed to play J. Jonah Jameson. Apparently. Yeah. He's got that on lock. Clark Gregg reprised his role as Agent Phil Coulson. That's cool. Oh, nice. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Huh. I can't believe I feel like I started the series at one point, but I can't believe I don't remember it. I remember the I Neil Patrick I Harris one like, really, really well, even though it ended really soon. It was only like two seasons where Neil Patrick Harris was Spider Man. Yeah. He was Spider Man. Yeah, uh, that was that. the that really flat two D like animated one. Um, it was whatever came out almost two thousand eight immediately after. Um, it was almost immediately after the the like animated Spider Man, like the Spider Man, Spider Man. Like it was almost in the nineties Spider Man. Yeah, so they did the like twenty ninety nine kind of pseudo version where he like goes to like alternate Earth, but it, like they just tried to make Peter Parker in twenty ninety nine, and then they did this right. like weird. Yeah, it was like hyper realism uh, animation that was like. Reminds you a lot of early, like, CD-ROM game kind of animation. That's, like, the mm-hmm. style it was. And it, mm, That's the stuff I love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a full 13 Yikes. episodes. Like, I thought it was two seasons, but, yeah, I guess it was only mm. one season. Uh, but, yeah, it was called Spider-Man The New Animated Series. <laughs> ha, yes. Classic. Of course. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is your Wheels of Vengeance spoilers for this week. Again, just go look at the Facebook page or the Instagram if you want to see more of them. If we didn't talk about your favorite spoiler this week on the podcast, I apologize. There's just so much stuff. It's literally just too good. Uh, I'm just insanely excited for Wheels of Vengeance. I can't wait. Yeah, geez. Shout out Ghost Rider and the mono molecular chainsaw arm. And then the oh, other yeah. Ghost Rider with the other chainsaw arm uh, because they're both sick. Uh, so, yeah, I'm loving I'm loving the Evil Dead Ghost Rider crossover X Terminator X Marvel. Uh, it's great. So Ghost Rider set coming soon. Wheels of Vengeance. Check it out. Finishing off the episode. We got a couple of listener questions. These are all on our discord. There are dozens of us. Dozens. If you want to support the show you can go ahead and join the patreon five bucks a month gets you access to giveaways get you access to our discord all sorts of patreon exclusive content videos behind the scenes pictures all sorts of cool stuff hanging out in our discord playing games having the chance to just chat with simi and ian and i in the discord it's all sorts of great stuff we have a good time and i have many people tell me all the time that calder it's worth it so 
check it out. Check out our Patreon. If you don't want to do the full five dollars to get into the Discord and all that other access, you can just donate like a buck or two. Whatever you want. There's just whatever. So if you just want to support us, then heck yeah, we appreciate it. But these are all from our Discord. These questions we're about to read. We're doing a pretty good giveaway this month. Also, by the way, giving away uh, some legacy cards from Notorious, some Hush cards, giving away a full set of Kerr from Notorious, as well as giving away a couple of super rares that we pulled in our cases from Notorious. And oh, uh, what's that? We're giving away a Pegasus cap, a Wonder Woman Generations pack as well. Wow, that is so cool. Um, and that's legit. That's what we're going to be giving away this month on Patreon. So if you want to be entered into win some of that stuff, go ahead and check it out at patreon.com slash dial H podcast. That is patreon.com slash dial H podcast. It's in the description of this episode. Click that link. You know you want to. Anyways, Matt Reed asks, what are some crazy ideas or thoughts on what the new dice in the Deadpool set will do? Maybe some dice with four ones and two sixes on a single die. Uh, so, listener, if you didn't know, uh, a solicit a few months back said that the Deadpool set, the Deadpool Weapon X set, which is coming out after Disney Plus Wave 2, is going to have special theme dice, which are not necessarily going to be a classic one through six E6. Matt, I think that's cool. Still I think potentially D6, though. Yeah. Still potentially D6, though, yeah. I like the idea of no numbers at all, and they're just all symbols, and it's just a Felix Faust. D- Not doing what his did, of course, but just, like, all symbols on it. Like, maybe oh, this okay. character, like, choose a character. They can't use roll of dice pink powers, or they can use all the pink power. You know, something crazy like that. I think it'd be fun where they just have a colored side on each thinking, side. Like- or just a symbol, you know? I, I mean, call me crazy, but, like, I had this, like, dream one night where I was rolling okay. Hero Clicks dice, and I, like... Okay, you're crazy. I, I'm throwing two, and then, like, I throw the two dice, and instead of numbers, it was, like, fist, lightning bolt, uh, mm. like, a uh, domino mask. It was, like, all these weird symbols. And I was, like, what, what's going on? And, like, there's no... I looked it up. There's no game that uses dice like that. And so there's no way to, like, have comparable dice, character-specific, from, like, an existing game, especially not, like, a WizKids game. So, I mean, like, I, you know, I just threw that idea in the trash as soon as I woke up and realized that. But, um, <laughs> no, uh, other than uh, incorporating Dice Masters, which I do think would be hilarious to, like, have a reason to have Dice Masters dice for a Heroclix player or, like, cross whatever uh, streams there. Um, oh, yeah. No, I think it'd be hilarious if, like, a character had essentially, like, a rally die where it's, like, the same thing as a rally mechanic, but it was, like, if they have XYZ token on their uh, card, then roll their special die, and their special die was just, like, six sixes. No matter what you rolled, it was a six or something. So it was, like, the auto-succeed kind of thing, like Carnage has for his D6 rolls. Um, I think that'd be funny, depending on which characters can use it. Um crazy idea would be like generate a bystander roll this d6 and the d6 has like which bystander has like is on it instead of numbers uh but at the end of the day what i would really appreciate is dice that i can still use in a normal game so that would be like this the typical one through six with like maybe an additional thing added to it like an additional symbol on each number or something but yeah will be interesting that's for sure i'm big into the idea like uh if there's a deadpool that has it he's gotten a lot of like ridiculous regeneration traits and instead maybe it's just like roll that dice with some fun symbols that just say what they do or oh, yeah. like that's his regen roll like his regen roll is like six 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 two 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 or something like that would be really fun for like a deadpool but that's only when he rolls regen you know uh yeah that could be some cool stuff for some like single D six shenanigans. I'm excited. I'm curious what it could possibly mean, but yeah, hopefully it's something cool at the end of the day. I mean, it's, it's more dice we get. So I know just more, more dice. I hope there aren't any that are just like, yeah, please check your opponent's dice. If they, yeah, if they make some that are like, this one just has like two six, like something really small. It's like, ah, please make sure these look different enough from any other, at least version of hero clicks dice, you know? Um, 
so that way I don't want people to be stinky and ruin it for everybody and be cheaty cheat cheaters. I feel um, like with these be, special dice. So I think they'll probably that be obvious. Isn't a thing. Maybe I hope so. Yeah, it's like I can from this angle I can see three threes on that die. It's like no, uh, it's a normal d six. Uh, totally. Totally normal, haha. <laughs> Unless, just kidding. No, it's normal. No, it's to- totally a normal dice. Believe me, please. But yeah, so I'm looking forward for it, and hopefully we get. I don't know. Hopefully it sees more. I feel like a lot of sets get like a gimmick, and then it's not revisited a lot. So I just really hope, fingers crossed, that if people like the dice, we get to see. Yeah, we get to see more dice. So. Yeah, just I'm always down for collecting your cross for sure. So I'm 100 percent. Absolutely. It. The next question is just kind of a fun one. So Alex, the Enchanter asks on a scale of one to Frogman, how excited is Calder for the new Iron Fist and Pulp? Uh, I mean, I would say like a nine. I wouldn't give him full on Frogman, but I, I do love this Iron Fist. I as far as figures I'm excited for, then he is a Frogman because I'm just so pumped that we got like such a cool, accurate well-rounded iron fist for the first time in dare i say 10 years like this is like literally like the perfect iron fist dial i like borderline close to perfect all he needs is like combat reflexes marvel knights keyword and then i'm like yep this is iron fist that's danny rand that's yeah he's literally perfect so yeah i absolutely love this dial it's a lot of knockback i like it i love not knockback so good so good is knockback the best hero clicks ability yes no maybe it's one of my favorites it's pretty dope uh but that is all the questions we have so again make sure to go support dialy for hero clicks on patreon one more quick shout out we have 200 two, 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 two. i'm wrong i'm wrong i'm wrong i'm wrong we have 1772 subscribers on our youtube channel right now i know that all you listening are subscribed of course you are but just in case go check out our youtube channel we really want to hit 2000 by the end of the year that is a goal of ours we're pretty much on track for hitting that having about you know two ish months left but definitely go make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel support us in the way that hey if you don't want to toss us some money on patreon go support like comment and share our youtube videos that also means a ton to us and get ready we're gonna have some fun spooky halloween themey videos coming your way pretty soon as we get into full-on spooky week this coming week yeah i'm ready for it i love halloween Uh, i love all the the random tricks and treatings that some people do and although there is no trick or treating sales up on coolstuffinc.com yet there is of course their their typical weekly sale and then their daily sales so you should check both of those out they're always interesting to see what kind of different stuff they've got going on right now today uh it's mostly D D stuff is on their wizard and warriors sale of the day or i think uh this is the weekly one the weekly one yeah uh bat slap is sold out but you can get notorious booster packs for three and three dollars and fifty cents off so they're thirteen dollars and forty nine cents you can get the token pack for 10.99 you can get uh marvel 60th for 10.99 you can get the uh spider-man beyond amazing bricks for 115 some good good fun spooky kind of stuff not really most of those aren't spooky but still notorious is fun at least uh and use code dial five to save five percent off when you do of course they've got the latest hero click singles and sealed products so check them out at coolstuffinc.com and i like checking in every so often just to see what kind of deals they've got going on and then as far as our other code that's at shop.wizkids.com it doesn't work on pre-releases uh specialty items or the iconic series but it does work on just their specialty brick stuff which right now as calder said at the beginning they've got the uh, spend fifty dollars on hero clicks and you get the surfing gingerbread man fresh out of the oven and uh yeah we talked about his dial on the show that's the only way we know that you can get one right now so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to spend a little bit of money you get some uh, free gingerbread men with your purchases. 
Um, things that you can buy as of right now, you can do the pre-order of Wheels. You can do Scott Porter's. You can do the uh, Play at Home Kit Werewolf by Night, which is the... I would say that's exclusive. pretty far up there since it's... Yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah. It's exclusive. So I think that's got to be your got to be added to the card and I if think you're going to be... Did want to hit that Scott 50. pull a legacy card from that one? Or is there just like a map? There is a legacy card in okay. this exclusive. One. I know one of them had... I think it's the Ghost Rider one has the smoke fire markers, and then the werewolf might have had the grave terrain markers, which are just they're just normal terrain, hindering terrain, but they say great or they have pictures of graves on them. So, yeah, if you uh, want to pick up the Dyson tokens, a uh, brick, and then both play at home kits, your total comes to two hundred and twenty four dollars and eighty seven cents before you use our code. So yeah, check them out. Okay. Shop.wizkids.com. Okay. Use code dial H10 to save 10% off most HeroClix purchases. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional HeroClix help. Ooh. <laughs> We're not going there. That's how numbers work. Over okay, yeah, six people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of these days uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Canada. We have to stop. And my bones are metal. Are you kidding? Wow, wow, wow. My horse is on fire. Oh, no.